I'm, I'm afraid they're going to sell the farms to the Chinese. Oh, and and that, I'm just paranoid now, perhaps. But so, in, in closing, like I said, I sat for there for nine months and I read everybody's emails at DFO and I read a lot of straight out lies. But nobody was, nobody was defending wild fish. There was not one case where somebody said we have a problem and DFO said, okay, all hands on deck, you go here, you go here, send that to the lab, there's your courier bill. Nobody. And I thought a long time about, do we get in there and try to really fix DFO? And I realized, no. It's, it's, they're, they're, just, they're just a mess. Um, there's a lot of good people in there, but it's, a, it's like, I don't know, it's like an anthill of little dens and, and pathways, and I don't think you'll ever fix them. Uh, the province of BC is the landlord of the industry. They're definitely uh, someone that we need to work on. They are the ones that decide that these migration routes are going to have a problem. But here's what I think we need to do. We've never actually used everything we know to restore wild salmon. We've kind of run around, we've had picnics, we put them up on fences, we fly flags for them, we do all kinds of things, but we never really use everything we know. I think that we need to form the Department of Wild Salmon. There are thousands of people in British Columbia who are already working for wild salmon. There are, first of all, all of the First Nations fisheries biologists and teams that are out there. They're up and down the coast, they're in the rivers, they're everywhere. My, I know it's, it's no offense now that we have somebody from government with us, but in my view, the provincial federal government are reserved. There is no, I do, I, I, I have no respect for the, uh, the way they're handling wild salmon. And my intent is to, as we get our disease results, is talk to First Nations. Because I'm, I'm new to this coast, I've only been here, you know, for my adult life, but I can see the big difference the people who are tied to one river in one place will take care of it with their lives. The others can give it up, can do whatever you want, can get swayed by a number of things. But I, I definitely I want to inform the First Nation governments. I work very closely with the First Nations of the Groudon. And whenever I get a disease report, I track down the First Nations people first who are responsible for that area because they deserve to make it first. But there's a lot of other people too. So there's hereditary chiefs, elected chiefs, lawyers, biologists, field teams, laboratories, fishermen, lots. What I feel needs to be done is we need to take cutting edge science, combine it with the traditional knowledge of how the pieces used to fit. So for example, I think that small teams should be formed that rove your area continuously looking at the fish, whether it's in the salt water or whether it's in the fresh water, um, and that those teams should be connected to universities. So you can go to a university and say, I want to know where our fish are dying. I want to know what the fish are doing. They will help these teams figure out what needs to be sampled and then use these accredited labs so that you have individual small projects that are fundable, but everybody is connected together. And in that way, we become much bigger and more effective than DFO ever was with people who are already on the grounds. And when I'm speaking to most audiences, I have to remind them that 10,000 years ago, as the glaciers were receding, the people and the fish returned to the land. They were here before, but they came to a very barren land, and they thrived together. In the Broughton Archipelago right now, we have 27 Norwegian feedlots. There are eight people left in my community. Broughton used to support 10,000 people, 10,000 First Nations people who needed the fish and respected them. In 2010, when those salmon came back, it was, it told us that they can still live with us. Those fish swam through the city of Vancouver twice.
once when they were going, once when they came back. They can survive us. But by denying that these viruses are happening, by dividing us like Elena was saying, and by allowing this to continue, we're going to lose them for sure. As there's no, as you cannot dose this animal in a lethal virus again and again and again. And I was just talking to the lab yesterday morning, and now we have found a third Norwegian virus. So we definitely need to come together to stop this from happening. And I think that wild salmon are perfect. They don't need to be managed. They just need us to know where to get out of their way and just let them pass. And those farms have to go. I can't see any other way. The patterns that came out of the polar inquiry affected me deeply. And so this summer we are going to be testing uh, sockeye from the Fraser River. And you know, our hope is that we can connect these viruses directly to the fish so there can be legal options. But I think there definitely has to be, I love what June was saying about peaceful, powerful resistance because I think that's where we have to go. Anissa and I are facing a, a wall of denial within government, a wall. They don't believe us, they don't believe our labs, they don't believe anybody who's finding this truth. You know, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my home because these tests are so expensive. But we feel possessed by this to keep going. So um, I really appreciate you guys staying through this talk. And I really look forward to seeing how you fish.